Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Holy Spirit, we depend on you to guide us into all truth like Jesus said. Thank you. Because we are walking in your truth. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. We will experience a true walk with you. And we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. While I was praying, I heard the Lord say to me, Son, don't hold back anything. Give it as I have given you. Praise God. Whoa. Now then, we, we were talking yesterday. We, we were looking at this story from Luke chapter 12. Jesus talked about covetousness and he gave the story about this man who had a bumper harvest. Wonderful. Everybody wants a bumper harvest. And then the next thing, God calls him a fool because of what he said in his heart. See, what did he say in his heart? He said, now I've got so great a harvest. Let me tear down this my small band and build a bigger one. And then let me store this my harvest. And then... I will say to my soul, soul, you can relax for many years because you've got enough. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. You've got nothing to worry about, <laughs> praise God. Now, first of all, this man just showed that he was living all his life for money. It's just like some, some of you right now listening to me. All you can think about, you're walking somewhere, but all you can think about is the day you will hammer. You know, as we use it, in, in, as we say, the day I will hammer. So you're hoping, you're just hoping that a business will come in that will just throw you into some billions. You are just hoping that, that you know, you're just, you're just waiting for that day. And when that day comes, oh, you almost go mad. See? Because you've been, your whole life dream is to get to this place. And, and let me tell you something. It's, it's dangerous because you, you are just saying that there is no purpose to your life. See, that's what you're saying. So all you're here for is just to hit that money big. And then what next? I'll start spending it. I'll start enjoying it. Now that's when I'll start living my life. You know, people talk like that. Say, man, how can I, how can I enjoy? Yeah. There's no time for enjoyment now until I make this amount of money. You need to repent from that thinking. Yeah, you need to repent. Because God looks at such people and he calls them fools. So I was saying something yesterday about tithing. Because I, they say the more you interact with people, the more you realize that their knowledge is limited. Now, several messages I've done, I've touched on Titan, I've, you know, you know, and then, so, so listen to me. Now, I began to consciously tithe. I mean, from, I mean, I grew up tight because my dad taught me it's important to tight. But you see, I didn't understand the real meaning until when I had that experience I was telling you about yesterday. That God commanded me, say, you didn't tell me how you would leave. And then I began to ask the Lord and then the Lord began to teach. That's when the Lord said to me, listen son, I came down to teach Abraham concerning tight. And don't tell me it is not important so Abraham was doing well and then suddenly he was coming from this um, war and he had defeated them he had gotten all the spoils and he was coming back and then suddenly the Bible say Melchizedek met him and the Bible say he gave Melchizedek the tithe of all question before then have you ever read Abraham giving tithe Next, have you ever seen, or do you think Abraham just saw Melchizedek and he said, okay, take tight. The Bible didn't tell us what transpired, see, but that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he would teach us all things. So when you see 
when you see a story like for like Abraham meeting Melchizedek, and the next thing, you say Melchizedek came with bread and wine, and then the next thing you find out that uh, Abraham is giving Melchizedek the tithe of all. You see, people don't understand that what was so what did Melchizedek come to do? Now, who was Melchizedek? Of course, you should have enough sense if you are a believer to know that Melchizedek is God that manifested himself as a man. You know, people find it hard to believe. I remember talking to somebody. He said, what do you mean? God showing up as a man. Say, yes, God shows up as a man. Say, no, how can God show up as a man? God is too righteous. He's too holy. He cannot show up as a man. I said, what do you mean? So, so think about it. Jesus is who? Even the Bible says Abraham, three men came to Abraham's house. And one of them was the Lord. So if you have a problem with that, then your problem is great. <laughs> so you need to start from foundation to understand what you even believe. So Melchizedek met Abraham and he taught him about tithe. Now what did he teach him? He taught him how to honor and acknowledge God with your finances. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. What are you doing with it? Only speaking in tongues. Raka ba 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 ba. Shaka la ba ba. Amen, 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 amen. Or power. The Holy Spirit is in me, so I have power. Barakata. You want to scatter the whole place. And then you want to go to the hospital and heal everybody in the hospital. Wonderful. And then you finish all that, you go home. And then no food to eat. And he said, ah, we had a great day today. Your voice is even going. We had a great day today. And the next day you're looking, looking for who to beg money for. Come on, come hmm. on. He has been sent. Listen, the, the best way I can explain this to you is this. The, can you imagine Peter and the disciples being with Jesus? And then they just finish a great meeting. And then they come back home and no food in the house. And Jesus starts telling them, that, uh, uh, Peter, uh, did we even remember to take offering? Uh, no, uh, because uh, Judas actually forgot the offering back. Are you serious? Yes. Ah, so, so what do we have to eat now? Uh, there's nothing to eat. Too. Hmm. Well, we'll convert it to fasting. We're fasting till tomorrow. You think Jesus ever did that? They, they, oh mashallah. Remember when, when they, they finished a meeting and they said, Lord, it's getting late. Let's send these people to go home so that they will go get something to eat. Jesus said, We don't need Abashaya. Hey, Dada Sikeba. Jesus said, oh, 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 Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help me. The disciples were thinking. And in said, man, it's getting late. It's getting. I, I just imagine how maybe, maybe James would have turned to, you know, you know, Bartholomew and said, hey, Bartholomew, it's getting late. It's going to take time for these people to get home. And they, we've been with them for how long now? Wait, so this meeting started three days ago. Three days. These people have not eaten. Maybe some of them came with some food and, you know, stuff. So, I'm like, wow. Like, you know, Jesus is, you know, Jesus is on his level. But we have to remember that these people are human beings. So they need to go home. So, they began to ask Jesus. You know, you know how, how, if you've been there, you know, your pastor is preaching and, and he's just preaching. And you're looking for a way to cut him eye. You know, you're looking for a way to, you know, some of you even, yeah, talk to the assistant pastor. Then assistant pastor now writes a note and say, ah, pastor, we are exceeding the time. Praise <laughs> God. And, and then what was their concern? These people, they need to go home. They need to go get food to eat three days now. We're not ready to start burying people on the road. And when they mentioned it to Jesus, Jesus just said, hey, 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 we don't need to send them a way to get food. We can feed them. Feed them. You. Hey. <laughs> are you looking at the crowd? And I said, yeah, what do you have? Oh, there's a young lad that came to sow seed. 
five loaves and two fishes. He, he said his mama sent him to, to give it to you. Oh, okay. Now that's exactly what happened. The guy had already given to the disciples. See? So they had it. They had the five loaves and the two before Jesus even thought about feeding the people. So when Jesus said, what do you have? You know, sometimes you don't know how these things operate. See? It is the Holy Spirit that spoke to Jesus and said, look, you need to feed the people. And he heard that from the Spirit of God. And then the disciples come and say, we need to send them away. He said, no, we don't need to send them away. We will feed them. He said, feed them with what? Now, Jesus knew for the Holy Spirit to say, feed the people, he must have made provision. So Jesus asked that question. He said, so what do you have? He said, five loaves and two fishes. He said, that's enough. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, that is enough. <laughs> five loaves, two fishes, enough for who? You? <laughs> and, and, and Jesus turned around and said, tell the people to sit down, and they should sit down in fifties. And then the, 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 the disciples, Peter, what's Jesus? I don't know. I don't know. We just follow instruction. So they all sat down. And then Jesus said, Where, where's the five blues? Uh, okay. And then he gave it to him. And he, he said, Father, thank you for this provision you've made to feed these people. We receive it with thanksgiving and we will enjoy it. Amen. Like, okay. And then he broke it. Peter, take, go to that group. <laughs> okay. John, take, go to that group. Andrew, go to that group. So they were holding a piece of bread and a piece of fish. And then they are going. And where am I going to start from now? Okay. Um, well, let me just obey. And then, Imagine pinching it and saying, maybe, maybe we want to, you know, like we just take communion, we want to bring bread. Okay, think. As he cuts it out, it grows. Uh, what's going on here? Sorry, hold on. He cuts a bigger chunk and it grows. Okay, hey, John, are you noticing something? So I was just going to ask you too. <laughs> What's going on here? The bread is increasing. Okay. So we can give them bigger portion. What do you think? Yeah, I think we can give them bigger portion. All right. So you take. Is that okay for you? Oh, yes, it's okay. Oh, yeah, you take. And you take. And you take. And you take. The bread refused to finish. The fish refused to finish. Makala <laughs> Bosheketa. You, you know, the same Jesus is still in your life. Huh. <laughs> Except that story is not true. Maybe they just wrote that thing to, you know, add spices to the Bible. But hey, Jesus is not even the first person to do that kind of a miracle. Elisha did the same miracle in 2 Kings chapter 2, I think. Elisha did the same miracle. He had the sons of prophets with him and there was no food in the house. And there was a young man who came to give his first fruit. And then he brought some loaves of bread. And then he told, Elisha told his father, oh, what do we have? He said, oh, a, a young man just brought some loaves of bread. So good. Tell the people to relax and, and serve the people. The servant said, huh? Sir. He didn't bring, the man does not have a bread factory. It was just his own portion of loaves of bread. Now, we know, I, I want you to get something now. You know, some people argue, first fruit, eh, meow, meow. Okay. <laughs> the man brought loaves of bread. You don't plant bread. You plant wheat. Am I right? You plant wheat. You harvest wheat. So why didn't the man bring wheat from his harvest? Why did he bring loaf of bread? You know, sometimes they say, eh, in the Bible, their title was animals and, and, and plants. Our time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm going to continue here tomorrow because we need to straighten all these things out to help you so that you will, you, your tr the truth in you will be pure and you will serve God really.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go out today and do well. God bless you. Bye-bye.